Hey, all my worthy viewers and Fleming Film Show fanatics. It's me, JD, your review master, Justin Doyle, and the host of the Fleming Film Show. We have Rob Fleming. Hey, Hello, Rob. Buddy. Welcome back, Justin. Thanks so much. How's it going? It's going well. It's going well. I'm looking forward to talking about uh, Canada's favorite Ryan, Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> Some people would argue maybe it's Gosling, but we'll we'll let it go because he's so much fun. Yeah, we have uh, uh, an actor, Ryan Reynolds, who's um, has a pretty solid career. He just came out with the movie uh, this weekend called Free Guy. Uh, it, it's been highly anticipated because it's been trying to come out for the last two years, apparently. Uh, and we've seen the trailers so many times, we've seen the poster so many times, and it's finally here, Free Guy. So in, in uh, honor of that, we're going to talk about uh, Ryan Reynolds and our top five favorite films. There's 55 films to choose from, so that's um, uh, uh, you know a lot to dive through. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited. He definitely has uh, a career that is, you know, it has its highs and has its lows, but I think what we all know and uh, can all agree on is that every time we see him on film, we really enjoy him. He's always a great presence on a, a, in a movie. And he seems like a good guy in person. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is, uh, it's not our top five favorite Ryan Reynolds movies. It's our top five favorite Ryan Reynolds performances, because I do think that that is different. Uh, there are movies that I enjoy more uh, than necessarily because of his a performance in a movie, you know. Uh, so that would be a different conversation. But um, today it's our top five favorite Ryan Reynolds performance. Do you have anything to say uh, about Ryan Reynolds before we dive in? Yes, I've I've never seen this show, but apparently he started out as a sitcom star. Uh, yeah, I guess. It says here his first time was on a show called Hillside in 1991. And he's, you know, in his 40s, mid-40s right now. So he started really young. Uh, and then his first film was in 1993 called Ordinary Magic. So he was just a little, just a, a wee little lad. Um, I think some people might know him from Two Guys and a Girl. Uh, yeah, that was uh, another show that I have not seen. He was also did some time on Sabrina the Teenage Witch, Scrubs, and uh, yeah, X-Files um, for a little bit. And he's been on Family Guy. And he's been on Family Guy, and he's also on Jeopardy! The Greatest of All Time. <laughs> I don't know what he was doing on there, but yeah, he's also done Saturday Night Live. Um, he's on with Lady Gaga uh as a as a host once and yeah he's been working consistently since 1991 so good for him all right who wants you want me to start yeah why not you go and start since this is your returning show uh, episode yes thanks for uh filling in having somebody fill in for me the last week but i'm and, uh, glad to be back my number five is a movie that a lot of people have not even heard of, and one that uh, even when I said to my girlfriend what my five was going to be, um, I said this film, and she said, what's that? And she had no idea. So uh, it's, it, it was really under the radar. I actually didn't see it until it was on DVD, but it was... Uh, not my first introduction to Ryan Reynolds, but my first introduction to Melissa McCarthy. And this came out in 2007, and it's called The Nines. And this is a movie where uh, Ryan Reynolds plays an actor, a showrunner, and um, a video game designer. And these lives intertwine in mysterious ways. But what is always consistent in these three lives, for some reason, is Melissa McCarthy. Uh, and it's a real trip. It is something that I still remember today. Is like the the whole structure of it. There, it was very green. Very lots of green going on. Um, but um, yeah, I just I'll never forget the performance by him because it was something that we hadn't seen from him. It was really sort of straight laced and like serious. You know, of course he has his charismatic side to him in it. 
But uh, also Melissa McCarthy is a strange weirdo, but also a delight. And together, I thought their chemistry really worked. So my number five is a movie called The Nines. Nice. I've not seen that, but it sounds promising. My number five is also a film that kind of flew under the radar. It stars one of my other favorite TV sitcom actors, Jason Bateman. It's kind of a Freaky Friday kind of switch, and it's the change-up. And what I really like about Ryan Reynolds and Jason Bateman is the chemistry they have together. And I like, kind of like how how Ryan is like this Jack the Lad kind of womanizer, and Jason Bateman's a family man. And they want each other's lives, so they get to experience each other's lives. And Alan Arkin's also really good as Ryan Reynolds' dad, and they have chemistry together as father and son. And obviously, I love Leslie Mann, and she's also brilliant in this film too. But yeah, my number five is The Change-Up. Yeah, that's a really good choice, because it is... I mean, the concept is so strange, it just would never happen. But it is like a Freaky Friday sort of sort of situation, and it's and it's disgusting, and it's weird, raw. It's like the it's the rated R Freaky Friday, you know. It's just something uh, that we hadn't seen when we had seen something like that. But um, it's you're right. The change of uh, Jason Bateman and Ryan Reynolds' chemistry is so damn good, and the rest of the supporting cast really helps elevate this movie. Uh, and yeah, I mean, it, it, the reason why I left this one off is because uh, to me, this is a typical Ryan Reynolds performance. You know, he, this is, he just has to get on screen, show his swag is, uh, he's good looking and, and the rest is, is up to him. Um, but, uh, I think the real good star of that film is, is Jason Bateman, but really great movie. He was actually on in the hotel when we were, when we were gone and we put it on for a little bit and still laughed at it. So it's, it still holds up. That's good. Okay, I'm going still obscure uh, for my number four. This movie came out in 2014. Again, did not see it in the theaters. Um, it was, uh, I saw it, you know, years and years later. Um, but I, I really enjoyed Ryan Reynolds' performance in The Voices. It is so, the movie itself is weird. It's odd. But Ryan Reynolds, again, he's not doing the Ryan Reynolds shtick. He's he's this delusional character. This is about a likable guy who pursues his office crush with the help of his evil talking pets. But things turn sinister when she stands up when she stands him up for a date. Like it's it's really psychotic in a really funny way. We have Anna Kendrick, who's always delightful in my opinion in it. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it's a Jackie Weaver's in it. She's always a good actress and yeah, it's just super, super strange, really, really dark, heavy at times, but it's also very entertaining and fun and funny. And you gotta love, you know, Anna Kendrick and, and Ryan Reynolds are, they're, they're like a perfect duo. Yes. Anna Kendrick is an actress I always like in things. And yeah, I would like to see the voices one day because that again sounds quite unique. Yes, yeah. I mean, I would recommend that one more over the nines, just because it's a little more fun. But um, the nines is definitely worth the view. Nice. Well, all films are worth the view in one way or the other. At least the one time. Definitely. My number four, I would say, is another unique film. This one also has Jason Bateman in, but it also has an ensemble cast in the Green Radio. Ben Affleck, Jeremy Piven, Common, and Alicia Keys. And this is one of my favorite Ryan Reynolds series performances, and it's Smoking Aces. I really what like the color incredible in this film. film. I what love the say? color. The coloring is phenomenal. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, the DVD, the poster cover, just shows you all the colors that you're about to see in the film, and it really is representative. That is... I just love that movie. See, that's that's an example of a movie that would be in my top five favorite Ryan Reynolds movies, because uh, I just think that movie is so damn good, and and it's it's a really really unique fun action film. Um, but again, I just feel like the movie is is better than the performance of Ryan Reynolds. But uh, it's a solid solid choice, and your the ensemble casting is so Jeremy Piven. Is remarkable in that film. Yeah. Did you see Smoking Aces too? Uh, no, I didn't. But I heard it was a prequel. 
Oh, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't have the same, you know, uh, ensemble as we'd like, but um, I never saw it either. Yeah, but a really good choice. That's a that's a stellar, stellar film. I really like that one. I'm right. Uh, yeah, that's good as a serious actor in that film, isn't he? Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, that one I did see in theaters. That one came out in 2006. Um, yeah, really, really solid. Ready for number three? Yes, I'm ready for number three. All right. Well, if we're going to have any crossover, I think it's going to be here. Typical Ryan Reynolds doing Ryan Reynolds. And in 2005, I'm about 20 years old. This is a movie that is made for me, and it's waiting. And Ryan Reynolds is so damn funny as the asshole in this film. I mean, it it does help that the guy that he's training in this movie, you know, it plays it well so he can, you know, play off of him. But he's a dick. He's funny, you know, good looking, charismatic. Uh, but it's just when you think of waiting, you either think of Dane Cook and his balls or you think of Ryan Reynolds. You know, it's just so, so fun. Um, yeah. Uh, have you seen Waiting? Uh, no, I haven't, but I've been recommended it by a friend. Rob, what are you doing? Why are you waiting on waiting? <laughs> you need to see it. It's <laughs> it's so it, over the top, rated R, raunchy comedy, but it's so freaking funny. It's just so funny, and especially if you've worked in, you know, like, uh, hospitality in any sort of way, you kind of get it. But even if you haven't, like, it's it's still so funny. I mean, the cast is amazing. Anna Ferris, Justin Long, David Koechner, Luis Guzman. Um, you have uh, the kid who's like a, a – he's – oh, Andy Milanakis. He's like 30, but he looks like he's 18. Uh, and then Dane Cook. It's it's just so dumb fun, but Ryan Reynolds playing that character, even though he's like the dick and the one you hate, you, he's still very, very likable. And this was one of his uh, earlier performances of doing this kind of comedy shtick, and it, it still was working for me. So, uh, waiting, uh, my number three. Stop waiting on waiting, Rob. I will check it out at some point. My number three is probably one of his funniest comedy films. This stars Gary Oldman, Sam, Sam Hayek, Richard E. Grant, and Samuel L. Jackson. It's the hitman's bodyguard. This film <laughs> is hilarious from start to finish. It's cast perfectly. The humour is perfect. Samuel L. Jackson and Ryan Reynolds' chemistry, chemistry is brilliant together. They really suit a duo. I'm not seen the second one. I heard it's not that good, but I want to see it anyway. But even if it's crap or bet or still good, I still don't think this this will beat the fir- beat my third choice. So my number three is the Hitman's Bodyguard. Uh, what a unique pairing, Samuel L. Jackson and Ryan Reynolds. Um, this movie came out in 2017, um, and it's it was it was a lot of fun it was a great uh action movie comedy every performance it just seems like they're having fun ryan reynolds is having fun selma hayek's having fun um and uh samuel L. jackson of course the sequel actually is a lot of fun and it's very similar and there's some surprises in there that even like my jaw dropped um, the stars in this one was Selma Hayek in the second, uh, but I went with a couple of uh, lady friends, and one of them was like dying, laughing, rolling over. Uh, so it's it's not as uh, you know funny I think for everybody, but I, a lot of people still get a lot out of it. But the Hitman's Bodyguard, I I had to think a lot and left that one off, but. Um, uh good 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 choice i mean it's it's so good that it had a sequel for some reason it's not the type of movie that would you know (laughs) but uh yeah good choice what's your silver okay 
going into a little bit of obs more obscure. But boy, did I enjoy this movie when I saw it. Did not see it in theaters. And, and I think Ryan Reynolds was the draw for me to see this movie. Uh, came out in 2015. It's co-starring Ryan Reynolds and Ben Mendelsohn, and it's called Mississippi Grind. And this is a down on his luck and facing financial hardship. Gary, who's, uh, or it could be Jerry, who's Ben Mendelsohn, uh, teams up with the younger charismatic poker player, Curtis, that's Ryan Reynolds, in an attempt to change his luck. The two set off on a road trip through the South with visions of winning back what's been lost. So Ben Mendelsohn has his own sort of ordeal that he's going with down on his luck and money. Ryan Reynolds has his own issues. Uh, you know, I don't want to spoil anything, uh, but together they come through and, you know, win some money and do some things. But it's it's not just about the gambling, you know, it's about their lives. Uh, Woodford Reserve was a really big uh, drink. This was a, a popular drink for Ryan Reynolds and Ben Mendelsohn to drink in this movie. And after I started, um, after I watched that, I started drinking <laughs> Woodford Reserve because I really enjoyed it. Uh, so it, it, more than just the movie, it got out, uh, some, some booze love for me, but it's just a, it's just a, it's a, it's a Ryan Reynolds that you haven't seen before. He's, he's very straight at lace, you know, the, the man, straight man, uh, character, not trying to be funny. He's always charismatic. Of course, you know, he's like the rock. It doesn't matter what he does. Um, but he's, he's also not the focus of being like the good looking guy in this one. And it's just about the duo and it's a weird pairing, kind of like Samuel L and Ryan Reynolds, but it, it really, really works. Um, and I, this is a solid, solid flick. Um, yeah. Mississippi grinds my, my silver, my number two. Nice. Nice. It's just, it just was, it was better than it should have been. It was something I, you know, why, why would I watch it? I don't know. You just put it on. And you put it on and you're just engaged and you watch the entire thing and you're really happy you did. I want to watch it because I like Ben Mendelsohn. And yeah. I like Molly's Game and that was about poker. Is there any... Is it quite similar to Molly's the Game? Uh, uh, not really. I mean, the, this one's not just about a poker. You know, it's all it's about all the games. I know he's a, uh, a poker player, but he, he helps with all the other games too because it's... It's craps and stuff, but no, Molly's game is very unique, and it's so intimate in that poker setting. Where this one's kind of, it's like a, it's a, um, it's a, a traveling movie, a road trip movie, Mississippi Cry. Okay, okay. You ready for my silver? I'm so ready. My silver is an actual lampoon movie, and it's called Van Wilder. <laughs> This is a teen Smart. comedy. It's got Cal Penn in. I can't remember who else is in it, but it's Ryan and Cal that's still the show. And this created a trilogy. The second one was Cal Penn on his own adventure to England. And the third one was a prequel of how uh, Van Wilder got into college. But the first one is the best, obviously, because of Ryan Reynolds' performance and the situation he gets himself into. And obviously, he's a good guy, and you want to see him succeed. Yeah, uh, I guess I'll just hop on with you because it's my number one. It was the first time that I was introduced to Ryan Reynolds, and my God, did he hit it out of the park. This is a fantastic comedy. And to put National Lampoons before it means that it's it's got to be, maybe not anymore, but it's got to be good. Like back then in 2002 when this came out, National Lampoons meant something good was coming out of it. And it's it's based off of a true story. Actually, Burt Kreischer, the stand-up comedian, stayed in college longer than he wanted to just because he – or longer than he needed to just because he wanted a party. Uh, and, uh, yeah, Ryan Reynolds, I mean, this is where we learned everything about him and how he's going to keep continuing to be the uh, – the man that he is today. Why he, why free guy is working, you know, why that's going to be a working movie because Ryan Reynolds started with this film as, as, as the Ryan Reynolds that we know and love today. And yeah, Cal Penn's so great. And it Tara Reed, my God, in 2002 was she smoking hot. And, um, it's just a really, really funny, funny movie. And I haven't seen it in a while, but I, I know it holds up. It's just, it's just got it, you know. I never went to college, 
it's kind of a fun way in, in into it and you know you can see like just how uh juvenile you can be but you know he turns he gets he turns it around he wants he wants to do better and and it's a really really solid performance by Ryan Reynolds first time I've ever seen him and I was really really happy that that movie is around and I I haven't seen the other ones cuz how you can't do better than that so uh not even necessary to see and uh yeah it's it's definitely my favorite Ryan Reynolds performance is Van Wilder that's good cuz I I did a uh, go to residential college I've not been to university but went to residential college and we did have some fun times there yeah, I, I know. I can only imagine. Yeah. So are you ready for my number one, the film that brought him international success? If you're looking at my T-shirt right here, you know what I'm going to pick. It's Deadpool. What What can I say? Okay, granted, X-Men Origins Wolverine, terrible movie. But Deadpool and Deadpool 2 are phenomenal. They're humour. They're, they're full of humour. They're not formulate Hollywood bull crap. You know, they're they're comedy, they're serious, they have heart, they have soul, they have death, they have tragedy. You know, what can I say about Deadpool? Yeah, I would think that anybody would at least have Deadpool in their top five favorite Ryan Reynolds performances. I left it out because I think the movie itself would have been successful no matter what even if it wasn't Ryan Reynolds. Well, I think that... The, well, the, the, did you picture another actor playing Deadpool other than Ryan Reynolds? Uh, I mean, maybe if I thought about it, but he's he's in he's in the, the mat, you know, he's in a suit the entire time, so it doesn't even really matter who it is. Uh, but I still think it would have been successful no matter what because of how the writers and the creators made it, you know, made it so. And but, that they made it rated but, R. But he had but, like the screenplay. He made yeah. all the jokes. It's his well, part. yeah. Once he became on board, like he put his Ryan Reynolds-ness into it. And he does elevate the movie even more than what it is. Because of him, it is a better film. But I do feel like it would be successful with, with or without him. But, um, uh, I, I mean, he that character will forever go down in the history books as one of the best like superhero characters ever depicted on screen for sure so there's no reason why it shouldn't be your number one it, that's a smart smart choice uh and yeah now that deadpool and deadpool 2 is in the mcu lore which is interesting uh yeah the movie came out in 2016 same year as the movie criminal came out which i don't know if you've seen that but kind of came and went uh do you have any also rants uh honorable mentions honorable mentions yeah uh yes i like his cameo in hobbs and shaw yeah well what about uh just friends you like just friends i need to see that one i've se- what's that one with him and Abigail Breslin, that was good. Promising, er, the, what is it called? Definitely, maybe. That's it, and the one with, uh, Sandra Bullock, uh, the, the proposal. The proposal, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I have a couple, Life, I thought was really good in 2017. Uh, Ryan Reynolds, Jake Gyllenhaal, uh, Rebecca Ferguson, um it's really similar to alien it's about being up in space and an alien creature but it's so damn good i really like that one that year um buried is really good it's just ryan reynolds locked in a a casket Uh, what dick's underground uh, the michael bay film that was good dick's underground oh six underground yeah. yeah, that was interesting. I mean, I love action films, but I just felt like that was just a throw up on me. It just was like, like it just threw up action all over me. And it's like, I don't like it like that. You don't, you know, it was, love, I don't love know. John Wick 3? Oh, I love John Wick 3. 
that's unique. That's different. They used horses to, to, <laughs> to kick you. Uh, Selfless is really good. That has um, uh, Sir... Why am I blanking on his name? Sir... You know, he's uh, Gandhi. Sir Ben Kingsley. <laughs> that's it. And uh, what about some stinkers? R.I.P.D.? I actually like that film. No. Um, what about uh, Million Ways to Die in the West? Yeah, that is a bit of a stinker. Uh, a good one. Safe House with um, Denzel Washington. I bought it on DVD, but I've not yet seen it. Come on. All right, and then uh, here's another one. Oh, I do want to give uh, big ups could have made it on my list is his voicing in the Croods movies because I, I think those are all really good. So Turbo was a bit weird too. Yeah, tur- tur- Turbo's on here. I see that. He also was uh, he, he was in Ted. He was in a bunch. I mean, recently, Free Guy, Hitman's Wife, Bodyguard j- just in this year. Um, and then, yeah, he did Detective Pikachu. He's another voice. Um, what else uh, that's pretty good oh we didn't talk about this the biggest stinker of all Green Lantern oh yes that's definitely his worst film <laughs> yeah holy schmoly yeah. so I'm glad that wasn't on any of our lists me too okay but what was on our list coming in number 5 for me is the 9's number 5 for me is the change up I have the voices coming in at number four. Number four is Smoking Aces for me. I don't know how you haven't seen this, but number three for me is Waiting. I don't know how this isn't on your list. My number three is The Hitman's Bodyguard. (laughs) No, I understand your number one more than that one. Uh, Number two is uh, the underrated Mississippi Grind. My number two is his breakout performance, Van Wilder, which is... My number one, because Van Wilder is definitely my favorite Ryan Reynolds performance. And my number one is his, uh, the one that's brought him worldwide acclaim, Deadpool. Very smart. Probably the most notable film that he's in, in all, in all of our ten, I would say. That and Van Wilder, I think, are the, are the biggest... But, uh, yeah, good, good list. Very yeah, good. Too. Yeah. I liked him in uh, Blade Trinity. I thought he was, he's really good with swords. So He is. He's very good with swords. Cool. Uh, well, what's next week? Next week, uh, Will Crab is coming back on and we're going to do La La Land versus Whiplash. A film off. A debate. A film off. And you get to choose who's the what's the best film? Yes, just like we did with uh, Baby Driver and Drive. Well, this is tough because I I think I already know what you like more, but I'm gonna have to try to be convinced. Yeah. So, yeah, and if uh, if you've seen the other debate off, then you already know. You're good a good debater. You're a good debater. I'm a good debater. <laughs> But I run. Cody is a good voice of reason too. Oh God! I I mean it's it's just in, we just like we said it's impossible to try to like talk bad about two great films, which this is also gonna happen again. Um, I know I've seen La La Land a lot, so I don't really have to rewatch that. But I'm gonna rewatch Whiplash because I only saw it in theaters. Um, but I also want to have some uh, things cocked and ready to go. I'm coming for you, little crab. I'm going to watch both of them again because just for, a, just for a good excuse to watch them again because they're both great movies. Yeah, uh, I mean, I'm definitely going to watch La La Land again. It's, there's no reason not to. It's, it's just... It's, it's, it's Canada's second favourite Ryan. Canada's <laughs> second favourite Ryan. <laughs> and America's favourite Emma. America's favourite Emma, yes. Yeah. Cool. Well, right, thank, you, thank you guys for listening. Unfortunately, I got rid of my patron, so we won't be funded by patrons anymore. But, but yeah, thank you guys for listening, and thank you, Justin, for 
for returning again and hoping to see you next week. Yes, definitely will be. See you guys. Thanks for viewing and uh, yeah, we'll talk to you uh, next week. Yes, see you next week. Bye, Justin. Bye, Rob.